and gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like good beer, you'll find it pays to be curious and learn about Schlitz for yourself. Now, the Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's a little past noon, and so far it's been an ordinary day. At the home of Ivy's president, Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, and his wife, the former Victoria Cromwell of the English Theater, Dr. Hall is just entering the living room where he meets Penny, their maidservant, and says, Hello, Penny. Will you tell Mrs. Hall, please, that I'm ready to eat now? Mrs. All ain't in, sir. Oh. She got a message to please come quick to a rehearsal of the Junior Follies about two hours ago. Oh, yes, yes, the Junior Follies. She said I was to inform you as soon as you wasn't quite so busy with your book. Thank you, Penny. You've been busy with that book a long time, haven't you, sir? Yes, over three years. Cool, fancy that. Over three years on one book. If I may say so, sir, I read much faster than you do. Uh, Penny, I'm not... The uh... secret is, don't stop to form each word with your lips. Uh, yes, Penny, I... You'll find it's also a great help if you run your finger along the page under the lines as you go. I'll practice, Penny, thank you. Quite welcome, sir. Any time at all. <clears throat> I'll answer the door, sir. Uh, yes, Penny, do, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Is Mrs. Hall in? No, sir, she's not. Ask them in, Penny. Come in, sir. A gentleman to see Mrs. Hall, sir. Oh, good afternoon. I am Dr. Hall. Is there anything I can do? Oh, thanks, Doctor, but uh, I don't think so. Oh, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I should have phoned from the air terminal, but I'm in a terrible rush. Uh, my name's Pinero. Won't you sit down, Mr. Pinero? Oh, thank you. I, uh, don't know Vic has ever mentioned me to you. I'm an old friend. Broker into show business. Oh, yes, of course. You're Artie Pinero. <laughs> the same. Yes. Well, she's often told me about you and the act you used to do. Pinero and Cromwell, wasn't it? That's right. Pinero and Cromwell. Those two funny people. Yes. Is that clock right up there? Yes, sir. Right up there. How do you get down off an elephant? You don't get down off an elephant. You get down off a duck. <laughs> 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 oh, yes, yes, yes. I've often heard of the supposed difference between English and American humor, Mr. Pinero. Uh, the understatement of one and the exaggeration of the other. But uh, if you were quoting from Pinero and Cromwell, those two funny people... Oh, if you mean that a jam tart smack in the face is not very funny but gets laughed at by everybody, Doctor, I agree with you. <laughs> oh, keep it simple is what I tell everybody on my way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're Vic's husband, I take it, eh? Happily, I am. I was never sure. I've been in Australia till recently. Are you in the business? Uh, the business of what? I mean, are you in show business, too? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm the president here. Well, I have been out of touch. Whatever became of Truman? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Pinero, you, uh, you don't understand. I am the, the president of this college, Ivy College. Oh, oh, yes, of course. And Mr. Truman, I believe, is quite well and still in the White House. <laughs> His lease is good through most of 1952. <laughs> well, it's not for me to criticize your customs. <clears throat> How's Vicky? You know, it's been a dog's age since I last saw her. Prettiest kid I ever knew and the nicest and the most talented. How is she? Oh, I think she's better than ever, Mr. Pinero. Although I must admit to a slight prejudice in her favor. Uh, and that great sense of timing for a comedy line. Yeah, her timing is, as always, admirable. And is she still uh, 
Oh, I know I'm being inquisitive, but I've got a good reason for asking. Is she still, uh, has she got, uh, well, I mean, uh, does she bulge? <laughs> Um, only where bulging is, shall we say, architecturally desirable. <laughs> but there again, I am prejudiced, Mr. Pinero. Uh, may I ask the reason for this uh, research? Well, you see, <coughs> I have something most important to talk over with her. Well, I rather imagine it might be important to me too, Mr. Pinero. Oh, of course it would, but I... I don't know if you'd understand it the way Vicky would. Well, why not try me? Well, you see, Doctor, once you've been mixed up in our business, you're never quite satisfied with anything else. You're never quite as happy as when you had grease paint on your face and were complaining about your lines. Yeah, do, do you think that applies to everyone? Oh, yes, I do, everyone. You feel, then, that Victoria might be unhappy here at Ivy? Oh, now, wait a minute, Doctor. I didn't say she was unhappy. It's just that she can't help missing the theater any more than you can help missing this library full of books. I'm not at all sure that I agree with you, but, but I do understand your point. Every profession has a magnetism for, the, for its most competent practitioners, which is almost irresistible. But, but why this sudden concern for Victoria's happiness? Oh, forgive me, Doctor, but I, I talk better when I walk around. Well, this is why. I need her. I need her badly. Well, in the question of need, Mr. Pinero, no one needs her as badly as I do, uh, with, if you'll pardon me, a certain priority. I know, I know. But this is show business. Now, I produced a musical review down in Australia, 1946, that's still running to packed houses. I wonder if the quiet of the campus has been deadly for her. My show is called Sydney's Harbour. It was such a hit down there that I brought a company to England last year, and it's still running there. I wonder if all the happiness she's given me left her with none of her own. Now, my point is, Doctor, next month I'm opening Sydney's Harbour in New York. I've been an idiot, so content with my own luck that I... And I would like Vicky to play the lead. Well, did you hear me, Doctor Hall? Hmm? I would like Vicky to play the lead. The lead, yes, yes, of course. The, oh, the lead, naturally. Uh, Mr. Pinero. Yes? Would you mind giving me a few hours on this? I'd like to think about it quite seriously. And then, may I phone you? I know that Victoria will be most anxious to see you. Why, certainly, only I, I don't have too long. Oh, could I drop around again about, say, six? Six, Mr. Pinero. And, uh, thank you. Thank me? Whatever for, Dr. Hall? For reminding me of something I had forgotten. <laughs> Hello, my darling. How did it go? Oh, if there's ever a junior follies at all, I shall be amazed. <laughs> you should have been there this morning. Sets falling down and fuses blowing all over the place. Orchestrations missing, actors going up on their lines. The director tearing his hair and screaming. <laughs> Everyone hysterical with week before opening jitters. <laughs> oh, it was heavenly. Well, it sounds... It sounds quite hellish to me. A begging your <laughs> You've never been in show business. It was meat and drink to me. Just what the doctor ordered. Vicky, do you find yourself missing the theatre terribly? I mean, do you ever have any regrets? Regrets? Of course not, Toddy. What kind of talk's that? Well, after all, you were at the height of your career when I met you. And the life we lead here, well, it's so different from the life you've had. Toddy, the... this is the height of my career right now. Every moment of it. I think you sacrificed a great deal. Would you think that you sacrificed what might have been a great political career by marrying an actress? Oh, my dear. Well, you I... remember what that congressman told you, that you might have been a presidential log? Uh, the phrase, my dear, is timber, not log. <laughs> <laughs> Although in some cases, log is the more descriptive term. Um... <laughs> Particularly when you realize that a log is difficult to handle, has a great affinity for a stump, and is most useful when dead. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but, oh, dear, dear, I'm digressing. No, Vicky, of course I don't regret it. Well, then, there you are. We might each have been something else if we never married. But we did. And we're happy, and that's the essential thing. And you don't ever wish you were back? No, 
Oh, Toddy, darling, grease paint and fiddles tuning up in the pit will always make my nostrils quiver and my ears twitch. That's why I love coaching these college shows. There's a little harmless smoke that keeps the old fire horse happy. Fire horse, indeed, please. You are speaking of the woman I love. <laughs> but seriously, Vicky, and the women's magazines notwithstanding, marriage is not really a career. In its original meaning, the word career meant a gallop, a gamble, a frisk. Marriage is not a gallop. It's a pleasant amble. It's also a serious partnership and a serious business. Life. It can coexist with a career only with the most scrupulous balance of interests. Hey, what are you trying to tell me? Uh, uh, Mr. Pinero is in town. No. Archie? Yes. Where? Whatever is he doing here? Where is he? At the inn. He'll be back here about six. Oh, how wonderful. I'll call him right this minute. I told him you were most anxious to see him. Why oh, am. I can't wait. I... Oh, you told him? Yeah, yes, he was here. Toddy? Yes, my dear? Does he want me to go back to the theater? Uh, suppose you talk to him. Marriage, my darling, is not a career. William, are you trying to get rid of me? Now, now, Vicky, is it, is it? Are you sending me back to the grease paint and footlights? Now, 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 Vicky, I could Have you decided but... that an actress's place is on the stage and never to darken your doors no more? No, no, no my darling, you... you oh, I listen. out in the snow with my shawl and my baby. Oh, darling, I have really tried to see both sides of the question. Well, I've made my decision. You have? Yes. I'm going. You are? Certainly. With this deafening public clamor in my ears, how can I refuse the call of duty? I'm Going? Going? I'm going to phone Artie. He's convinced you that I should go back to the theatre. Now he's going to try and convince me. And let me tell you, if it... What's that peculiar look in your eye? Just speculation, my darling. I think I shall meet Mr. Pinero on the front steps with a loaded pistol. I have just invented a new crime, Pinero side. <laughs> <laughs> and in court, I can say that everything suddenly went black. And believe me, Vicky, I can think of nothing blacker than the prospect of losing you to a jar of makeup. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. An experience like that usually has a story behind it. So before we return to the halls of Ivy, let's hear the story of a new house, the couple who moved into it, and a tour of inspection by their next-door neighbor that stopped almost before it started. I'm the next-door neighbor, a fact for which I'm deeply grateful since it led to my first taste of Schlitz beer. But to begin at the beginning... My neighbors had just finished getting their new home in order and wanted me to come over and give the place my approval. I went in through the back door and was led into the stainless steel splendor of a modern kitchen. There, with love in their eyes, my new neighbors showed me the miracle of automatic dishwashing, the efficiency of their new stove, and the amazing capacity of their new refrigerator. At that point, the tour of inspection came to an abrupt halt, for the refrigerator was well stocked with Schlitz beer. Somehow, I'd never gotten around to trying Schlitz before, though I'd heard a lot of good things about it. My curiosity must have shown, because my neighbor took out a couple of bottles of Schlitz and poured a glass for me. I drank, and I realized right then and there what I'd been missing. Neighbor, I said, although I've been no farther than your kitchen, I can tell you this. If the rest of your house is in as good taste as the beer you serve, then believe me, you've made a sound investment. No wonder they call Schlitz the beer that made Milwaukee famous. In the halls of Ivy, we find Dr. Hall talking to his wife, who's just had a fine offer to return to the theater. Vicky. Yes, dear? You know, quite sincerely, 
I don't want to stand in the way if you decide to take a sabbatical of your own. If you do think you'd like to get back in harness, as it were. I know how one can become infatuated with one's own profession. Even mine, prosaic as it may seem in comparison to footlights and first nights. There are times when I positively thrill to the smell of old books. <laughs> I, I remember we were joking about it once, about inventing a perfume for the wives of faculty members. We were going to call it Essence of Worm-Eaten Volumes. <laughs> You might even call it Ode of Voltaire. Oh, very good, very good. Um, but as for your absence for a few weeks disrupting my life, well, I, I shall miss you, of course, but uh, I can manage. Oh, you can, you can. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, after all, I'm not a stereotyped absent-minded professor. No, I know. You're probably the most present-minded professor there is. <laughs> oh, thank you, my dear. So... Oh, now look. I had a wonderful life in the theater, but I have a wonderful life with you here. And I never want anything to change that. Well, nothing ever will, Victoria, as far as I'm concerned. I can only repeat a phrase Mark Twain placed in the mouth of Adam about Eve. Wherever she is, there is Eden. Excuse me, sir, a young lady's calling. A Miss Keating. Keating? Oh, it's some um, Sally Keating. Sure, in Penny. Yes, Mum. Sally Keating, that's a familiar name. Yes, she's the lead in the junior follies. Oh, I don't yes. know exactly what... Well, oh, come on, come on in, Sally. William, you've met Sally Keating, I'm sure. Oh, yes, indeed. Please sit down, Miss Keating. I understand you're the leading lady in the Junior Follies. <laughs> Good heavens, what did I say? Sally. Now, Sally, what is it? Sally, now tell me. He threw me out of the show. Squiffy threw me out of the show. Oh, no. Uh, Squiffy? This is Dick Lester, class of 51. He's the director. Give me your handkerchief, William. Now stop it, Sally. Tell me what happened. Squiffy was choking Larry and choking Larry. What's that? You mean throttling him? Larry threw his baton at Squiffy first because some of the orchestrations were on fire. On fire? On fire? Did Squiffy have a match to them? No. Oh, there was a short circuit in the pit before we could put it out. It was really the fall of Bobo. What's a Bobo? <laughs> She's a who, not a what. It's Bobo Cleary. She's the head electrician. Oh. Now, now, Sally, stop it now. Now, stop it at once. I'm sure you're not really out of the show. I am. And I don't care. I don't want to be in it. I hate the part. I never wanted it in the first place. The songs are dreadful, and the lights I gave don't leave me standing there with egg on my face opening night. And I would appear in a production with any of them for all the money in the world. I hate them. <laughs> is, is, is this what you meant week before opening jitters? That's it. <laughs> oh, dear. Is it always like this? Of course not. This is serene compared to the general run of things. Now, Sally, stop that and listen to me. You're behaving like a child. It's a very good and funny show, and the songs are some of the best I've ever heard. And you'll be fine opening night. You know it as well as I do. Now, I want you to run along home and douse your face with cold water. And then I'll meet you in the auditorium in an hour. Well, all right, Mrs. Hall. But I... I'm scared to death about opening night. Well, good for you. You should be. I always was, too. It, it proves we have emotions. What good is an actress without emotions? Gee, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, keep telling me that, will you, Mrs. Hall? I'll see you in the auditorium. Bye, Dr. Hall. Uh, good, goodbye, Miss Keating. <laughs> Poor, happy child. All upset and enjoying every heart-throbbing dramatic moment of it. Enjoying it? You really mean that? She's enjoying every tear that runs down that pretty face. Yes, I suppose that's right. I've often thought that young people were purposely designed to be intensely emotional, out of all proportion to the moment at hand. Then, in later life, when they meet real problems, their feelings have been tempered to withstand the sharp edge of disaster. Mm. You must have found that out from observation, Toddy, not experience. I can't imagine you being very upset emotionally. Oh, no, my, my equilibrium was fairly good, Vicky, until I met you. You mean I tipped you over? Well, as a matter of strict uh, uh, historical fact, my darling, the full impact of my being uh, tipped over struck me about the third night we had dinner together in that dim-lit little restaurant in Soho. Oh, yeah, I remember. A little French place. Oh, I mean, you know, Greek, all yes. of them combined, I think. Yes. I had a conviction as I sat there and, and saw the candlelight experimenting with your eyelashes that this was a moment to remember. William 
dear, for a visiting American. You do find the most delightful places to take me. Well, thank you, Victoria, but most of them are rather ordinary places which become delightful by reason of your arrival. No. Oh, with this little restaurant, I never saw it before or even heard of it. Oh, my, my ingenuity has an economic basis. Mm. This place looked quiet, clean, and inexpensive. Uh. You know, I've been prowling around this district quite a bit. Yes. Soho, it is interesting, isn't it? Intensely, the very name. Soho. A fox hunting term, you know. Is it really? Yes, this this was originally fox hunting country. And Soho was the huntsman's cry to call off the hounds. And later on, when the Edict of Nantes was revoked, this was the refuge of thousands of French Huguenots and others escaping from the French Revolution. Thus, through the centuries... Soho has become London's foreign colony. Thank you. That's all right, darling. The, the bus leaves the Marble Arch at two o'clock. Oh, well, I'd be very happy to be on it. But how on earth did you know all this? I've been here all my life, and I never knew these things. Oh, it's nothing. Strangers always know more about a country than the natives. When we get to America... We, we... What did I say? You said, when we get to America, we, you said. I heard you. Distinctly. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I I had no right to presume that... I, I mean, oh, forgive me. No. <laughs> you must... My thoughts, my hopes ran away with my tongue. Sitting here, watching your face... And, and I don't think I shall ever want to eat another meal except by candlelight. Victoria. Yes, dear? I think I must be a little mad to, to think as I've been thinking... Here am I, an American professor on his sabbatical with neither fortune nor fame in his pocket, having the unutterable presumption to hope that a reigning star of the London theater would... Would what? Would... Would, would you care for more coffee? <laughs> no, thank you, William. Oh, no, nothing more to... Oh, Vicky. Vicky, darling, you haven't eaten a thing. Look at your plate. Well, look at your own. But what, what? Didn't you like the dinner? Did I choose a bad restaurant? William, dear, how could either of us possibly eat? You've been holding my hand ever since we sat down. I have? Oh, good heavens. Oh, Victoria, I, I, I am sorry. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it again on every possible occasion. Do what, sir? Hold your hand like this. Well, thank you, sir. Very kind of you, sir. But don't you think that... William, Miss Penny, you're holding Penny's hand. Of course I am. William and Penny, the two happiest people in the world. William and Penny! Oh, what am I? Penny, let go of my hand. Yes, sir, gladly, sir. You're pinching me ring into my fingers, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I, I thought uh, I was... What was it um... you wanted, Penny? Mr. Pinero is here. Uh, Pinero? Oh, oh, yes. Show him in, Penny. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Off again on one of your little excursions, Toddy? <laughs> yes, I, I guess I was. Was I with you this time? <laughs> oh, you're always with me, my darling. My excursions, as you call them, always call for two tickets, and I always... Mr. Pinero, sir. Artie! Vicky, my duck! Oh. Won't you sit down, Mr. Pinero? Mr. Pinero and Trommel, those two funny people. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm so glad to see you, I could cry. Now try this chair over here, Mr. Pinero. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Well, you're looking great, Vicky. Oh. Why, well, you haven't changed the hair, so help me. Oh, what you do to them in Sydney's harbour <laughs> is nobody's business. I've told her part of your plan. You're absolutely made for the part, Vic. Why, you'll be the toast of the town. Yes, Artie, my husband told me what you said about putting your show on in New York. But I wasn't able to paint quite such a colourful picture as he did. That's well, it's very simple. I need you, pet. Thought it all over a million times, and you're the one, the absolute one. It seems, Vicky, that you are the... Uh, one, wherever you go. Now, name your own terms. Why, this would be the biggest thing that ever hit Broadway. Now, oh, what about it, Vicky? I'm afraid, Artie. It's too late. It, it sounds absolutely lovely. But I'm just too happy here. Uh, Dr. Hall, I appeal to you. You have the understanding of a professional. Oh, you know how I feel about this, Victoria? <laughs> I'll miss you terribly. But if you feel the slightest desire to go back... William. Uh, what, my dear? Nothing on this earth could persuade me to leave you. You see, Artie... No, no. It... Don't go on, Vicky. I know the answer. Hmm. The way you two look at each other tells me more than words. Well, 
It was worth trying. Oh, yes, Mr. Venera, well worth it. Broadway's loss is Ivy's good fortune and mine. I'm, I'm sorry, Artie. You were sweet to remember me. Oh, forget it, Vicky. Just thought it would be nice to get together again. Pinero and Cromwell. Those two funny people. Tell me, do you know how to make a Venetian blind? Stick your finger in his eye. <laughs> Goodbye, Artie. Applause and exit, Artie Pinero. God bless, Vicky. And good luck to you, Doctor. Thank you, thank you, um, Artie. And my sincere sympathy. You see, I too know what it means to have a top actress under exclusive contract and a solid hit with the prospect of a long, long run. Goodbye, Mr. Pinero. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, welcome home, Vicky. I've never been away, my darling. Ah, uh, but it must have been tempting. Toddy. Hmm? Have you ever looked down Faculty Row at six o'clock in the evening? Often. Have you ever seen the trees change colour while you were watching them? Mm, many times. Have you ever listened to the singing at night on Fraternity Lane? Oh, I've even added my own baritone from outside the windows. And have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror? No, 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 Victoria. I like it here, Tolly. I love it. <laughs> curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. And uh, now here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Ladies and gentlemen, when disaster strikes, the Red Cross is there with emergency assistance. Even more important, the Red Cross stays on the scene to help rebuild and to provide medical care. Last year, the Red Cross gave assistance to over 200,000 persons in 330 disaster operations. Your help is needed. The forearms of the Red Cross embrace the entire world. Forearmed is forewarned. Give more than before. Good night. Good night, everybody. Around us here today, and we will not forget, though we be far, far away. We'll be seeing you next week at this time at the hall. Of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The other players were Joseph Kearns, Janet Waldo, and Gloria Gordon. Tonight's script was written by Walter Brown Newman and Don Quinn. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking. <laughs>